My name is Matt Rozek, uh, Chairman, Co-Founder of Block. We're a blockchain technology company. I uh, also serve as founding partner of Tally Capital. So I've been investing in this space uh, for five years. And uh, on one hand, it, it bought me an education uh, in this ecosystem on what was working, what wasn't working, and uh, also uh, built some of the best relationships with uh, the best technologists and entrepreneurs in this space. And um, I also serve as chairman of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, the largest trade association in this ecosystem, um, and kind of bridging the gap between this new tech frontier and, uh, and regulators. Um, but all that aside, what really inspired me uh, to, to participate in this ecosystem is for the first time in my career, being a technologist, an entrepreneur, uh, uh, an investor, is that I felt for the first time I could be a part of something that could change the world. You know, it's like you, you meet like entrepreneurs that are saying, hey, I'm going to change the world. It's like, that's like a social gaming app, you know, it's like, what are you talking about? It's like, but now with these layers that we're building out, it's, uh, it's pretty profound. So, so let's kick this off uh, right here, okay? Last November, uh, Bitcoin punched through 10,000. And that was a huge psychological dynamic. It basically turned the rest of the year through the holidays. The dialogue went from, uh, you know, almost like 25 years ago, the dialogue was, you know, do you have email? The dialogue over the last couple of months was, do you have Bitcoin? And, and you know, outside of just like institutional investors, uh, that started to, to happen at the Thanksgiving dinner table and, and all the way through, uh, through today. And, uh, and who here has, owns any cryptocurrency? Raise your hand. Okay. I can't even see. Uh, who here bought it within the last three months? Never before. So new, new adopters. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's kind of take a step back and see like what, what is really happening here? What's the narrative that's, that's being creative, created in this ecosystem? And, and we all heard this, this old adage, money is power. And that was, that was typically reserved for the few. And now with the, the advent of cryptocurrencies and blockchain tech, now, money is technology. And so, technology is becoming power, and it's becoming power for, uh, for many. And we're seeing, you know, and you could transpose money in terms of censorship, you could transpose money in terms of centralization, and all these different form factors are changing, and they're becoming democratized. Other dynamic that, that I, I like to share is, uh, people are like, well, what the heck's a blockchain? When I think of blockchains, the mental model I have, it's, it's a network. So think about a blockchain equals a network, a, a cooperative, um, digital cooperative, where if you contribute, you get stuff back. And we, we know the power of networks. And this is a, an infographic that many of us have seen where Uber has no cars, Facebook creates no content, and on and on. And here we have Bitcoin that has no central authority, has no branches, has no CEO, et cetera. And, and something is changing in the definition of uh, what a network is. So all of this really started with Bitcoin. Satoshi Nakamoto uh, issued a 16-page white paper in 2008, and it's no coincidence that happened after the collapse of, of Wall Street and the whole financial uh, ecosystem. And that was a failure from the, the top down, right? And then since Bitcoin was invented and launched in 2009, we've seen innovation kind of ra raise and grow from the bottom up to where we are today. And that has inspired a lot. It's inspired a uh, developer in, in uh, real life Satoshi that's, that's walking among us in, in the form of Vitalik Buterin who invented Ethereum, a global computing platform. And uh, he actually tried to build uh, what, he, what he wanted with Ethereum on Bitcoin, but wasn't able to actually do that. So he launched a new protocol. And we're seeing that more, uh, that theme play out more and more. And with Ethereum, that, that gave access to, you know, over the last 18 months, uh, entrepreneurs to do some crowdfunding with a standardized ERC-20 token. And that's created this, this amazing, like, Cambrian explosion of innovation and finance. We've seen $4 billion of capital being raised with a couple hundred uh, ICOs. And that is incredible. And, and yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, good stuff, a lot of weird stuff. Uh, but these, these, uh, these swaths of capital 
these uh, innovations, they, they, they require lots of money. And if you look back history, uh, in history, if you look at railroads, telephony, internet, same dynamics happen. Effervescence creates these new, these new markets. And so here's coinmarketcap.com. So if any of you guys are well rested, get lots of sleep, you probably don't know what this is. Uh, so this is uh, a top 50 website. It's, it's kind of, I guess, surpassed the Wall Street Journal uh, from a uh, traffic standpoint. And it's got a, you know, half a trillion plus, it's gone through a bit of a roller coaster recently, half a trillion plus market value on about 1,400, 1,500 line items that are listed here. And we're still at the beginning. You're, you guys are in the right room at the right time. This is still the, you know, it's sub one trillion. I, I would say that this ecosystem is still in the stone ages of, of cryptocurrency. So, so we're still very early. We have a lot of building to do. Um, but, but having this kind of a representation of a, you know, five, 600, almost a trillion dollar market cap, a year ago today, the market cap was about 16 billion. So that sounds effervescent and, and kind of heady. Uh, at the same time, um, the, the blockchain utility, the throughput utilization and, and kind of uh, usage of blockchains is still relatively low, it's relatively ho-hum. Uh, you know, the, depending on what statistic you want to uh, believe, it's, it's less than 10%. So we've got a lot of work to do, not only on the tech, but also on the adoption. Uh, the other thing that's, that's uh, remarkable in this space is that generally these, uh, these uh, cryptocurrencies are, are pretty liquid. And that's, that's different than like the penny stock dynamics or some of the other ways in which uh, innovation was financed uh, historically. And so the, the tokenization of things is upon us. Uh, we're gonna see you know, well beyond money, uh, every layer of the internet uh, be looked upon and decentralized. Uh, my, my dear friend David Johnson has this great quote, if it can be decentralized, it will be decentralized. And so look at Amazon Web Services. Uh, they're twice as large as Google, uh, IBM and Microsoft's public cloud, and they kind of are the, the 500 pound gorilla in this space. Imagine a decentralized web services and, and kind of uh, you know, uh, extrapolate every layer of Amazon between network and compute, storage, database, et cetera, and we have new players that are coming in, raising money, innovating. Uh, Orchid is, uh, is a great project that's uh, uh, just announced uh, about a month or two ago. And each of these is trying to uh, extrapolate that particular layer of Amazon Web Services. And it's, it's still in the infrastructure phase. Pretty soon we'll get suites, and pretty soon we'll get more comprehensive stacks at the other end. Identity, this is Civic. Who here feels like they own their own identity? You know, it's like uh, going to Target and buying you know, laundry detergent and giving a credit card or uh, then you gotta give your driver's license or whatever. That, that the cashier has way too much information. They, they know my address and that I'm a Sagittarius and like all this stuff that is like, you know, uh, you know overkill. Um, but if you had your own digital identity and a partition identity stack where you would have uh, you know, my money is green, it doesn't matter, uh, 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 pay, the, uh, uh, pay the cashier. If you go apply for a job, go to the hospital, apply for a mortgage, etc. Each layer has different data, different provisions, and different rights. And so um, Civic's got a, a great initial kick and kernel that uh, is going to drive a lot of that. And then traditional assets are gonna to get tokenized. We're seeing uh, early signs of this in, in even uh, equity and securities. So T0 is building a platform uh, for the trading of this, uh, compliant, regulated, et cetera. Uh, Polymath uh, is creating a platform to tokenize uh, equity uh, uh, securities, equity tokens. And you know, for, the, for the last 12 months, that was kind of like the uh, Asbestos. People did not want to touch that. They wanted utility tokens, but we're going to see equity tokens get into focus, done compliantly, registered, etc., and we'll see another kick of uh, of innovation in that space. So, who wants a Kardashian coin? Anybody? I, I mean, it's ridiculous on one side, but on the other side, think about if you could create uh, uh, a token. That's you know, there's a lot of affinity in. Uh, in likes and Instagram, uh, social dynamics, and if you could, if you could harness that value and create a, uh, 
a provably scarce token supply for a particular brand, a particular tribe, an artist, et cetera, uh, those, those affinity points turn into currency, turn into economies. So if, if, uh, if we all here had you know, each one Kardashian coin, or I'm from Chicago, Chicago Bulls coin, and that, that was the entire supply. So if like uh, L'Oreal wanted to talk to the Kardashian ecosystem, they would have to buy some of the tokens, create a market for that, and then they would incentivize us on certain behaviors to buy uh, L'Oreal products. So, so it's, it's on one hand kind of sounds weird and silly, but on the other hand, as you focus in on it and you harness some of those ecosystems, it gets pretty exciting. It's like, what would be the value of an Elvis coin today? You know, it's like, well, Dogecoin is a, a billion. That's got a tribe and a, and a uh, kind of ecosystem around it. And so I, I think we're going to see more and more of these attempts. Some may fail, some may be terrible, and others will punch through and create real, real economies. Space. So uh, Space Chain is, is uh, 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 we just raised $100 million launched last week. We are... Um, uh, putting satellites in outer space to create a non-terrestrial AWS, a, a, a software layer that's not on planet Earth. And that's really interesting from a data storage, privacy, security standpoint. And quite frankly, I think it's also going to inspire uh, people to innovate and build stuff in outer space. It's, it's a really cool uh, dynamic. So we, we talk about Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin? Well, it's starting to turn into a store of value. It's getting uh, codified into this, this really secure, tight uh, uh, protocol with not a lot of innovation. A lot of innovation will happen on top of it. But what if, with all that hash power, with all that security, you can leverage that further and, and create security as a service for other blockchains? So, so my sense is, you know, th there is a future where, where Bitcoin is this uh, security route, the security anchor for lots of other blockchains. There's a lot of hash power, a lot of security there. So what if you're able to uh, build connective tissue to your blockchain and make it as secure as Bitcoin? What would that do to the market cap of that chain that can't really get that same security model? So Veriblock is, is solving that uh, component, and uh, is, you're going to be hearing more and more about that uh, later on uh, in this quarter. Metronome. So Block, my company, uh, we are launching a new foundational cryptocurrency in February. So why would anybody build a, a new crypto today? There's plenty of cryptos out there. We just saw 1,400. Uh, this ecosystem is not a static picture. It is a movie. It continues. The innovation continues. And so if you have a blank sheet of paper and you're saying, hey, I want to build a new cryptocurrency with the best tech, the best token economics, and some of the best thinking uh, available. And, and so my, my co-founder, Jeff Garzik, who was a Bitcoin Core developer, he's on the board of Linux, uh, just fantastic entrepreneur and technologist, designed Metronome. And it's got three really uh, key takeaways. One is it's uh, cross-chain. It's, it's portable. So you go, for, it's, it's launched on Ethereum, and then it can move from any uh, EVM. So you go to Ethereum Classic and Quantum, etc. And that portability is new and different. Uh, our white paper is not called a white paper, it's called an owner's manual. I and mean, this, this is the closest proximity you could have to your crypto, whereby don't think about the rail, think about, you know, you could move your boxcar into other rails. And that's new, that's an innovation. Two is the token economics. So we have, uh, at launch, 10 million tokens, uh, and then every day there's two tokens a minute. So 2880 a day are getting sold in an auction. And so that creates an interesting mintage curve. And lastly, uh, what I really like is, you know, so what happens with the proceeds that are raised in this? You know, does it go into some weird foundation? Does it go to block? Neither of the case. It goes into a smart contract. So all those proceeds go to the smart contract and provides liquidity and price support to the metronome ecosystem, which is very new and novel. And so it kind of funds this, this you know, you, you, when, you, when you design a new crypto, you, you think about what are the, the, the catalysts uh, to create a flywheel. And, and so I, I'm really excited about, uh, about Metronome. You'll he be hearing more about it in the coming weeks. And so a new asset class has been born underneath our feet. These are carnival tickets, right? It's like I, I try to explain to my, my brother, sister, neighbor about, like, what are these tokens? What, you know, and the best example I could find is, like, like it's, it's a carnival ticket. And they're like, seriously? 
And I'm like, well, think about it. When you go to Carnival and you got to buy, uh, and this is a silly example, but it's, it's a good one, um, and you want to buy cotton candy, go on the merry-go-round, et cetera, well, you can't actually use cash. You have to use a ticket in that ecosystem, and it's captive. Um, and, and so it's, it's a different way of thinking about it, and obviously they're provably scarce. There's not reams of this. And that creates a market and an economy in that particular uh, network. And so th this new asset class isn't just available for venture firms, hedge funds, institutional investors. This is open. That's the other thing that's really cool about this. There's no like, you know, do you need to ask for uh, permission, so to speak, you know, exchanges are, are, are upping their game in terms of a AML and KYC and, and upping uh, the compliance, which is great. But generally, you don't need to ask. You don't need to be somebody or know somebody. You have democratized access to this, this new asset class that's, uh, that's being built underneath our feet. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty exciting. And so a couple of different worlds are, are forming here. We, we have this, you know, these incumbents, these banks, and these large uh, enterprises that have significant advantages today. They have brands, they have networks, and um, they have a regulatory edge that a lot of the whippersnapper, you know, the, the proverbial banks, banks of one, do not have. And uh, while we're seeing you know, a half a trillion dollar market cap uh, today, as this ecosystem continues to, to build and percolate and expand, we're going to see these two worlds you know, connect, collide, a little bit of both. It's going uh, it's, it's to be really exciting to watch. Uh, but there will be bumps in the road, right? I mean, we've seen some of this. Uh, regulation is, is, is uh, of consequence. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the days of, you know, uh, you know, just do it and uh, see what happens. In, in form factors like money, uh, it lights up every light in D.C. and Beijing and everywhere else. And so uh, regulation and, and maybe even regulatory arbitrage is going to be at play. We saw this, you know, over the last few weeks with China and uh, and Korea, and, and I think that's gonna, uh, we're gonna see that more and more and more. And uh, we have to engage with regulators. That's, that's the other thing. It's like, yeah, we have to educate them. I, I spend a lot of time in DC, and I, and I, um, I help uh, educate uh, these members of Congress, these th three letter agencies, on what this technology is, what it isn't, and how it's going to change not only DC, but Wall Street and the rest, rest of the world. Adoption. Is, is another big deal. If, if, if on the institutional side, there's no good custodians to manage crypto. Uh, on the consumer side, you know, managing, aside from Coinbase, which, you know, is like the Gmail for, for this space, uh, aside from that, it's like, you know, trying to, that's a blowfish, by the way. It's, it's like managing your own crypto is like trying to flay a blowfish. You know, if you hit the wrong gland, managing private keys, it's not intuitive, it's hard. But those form factors are getting better. Exchanges are getting better. Security is getting better. And we're going to see that continue. And then hype, right? So, you know, are, are, is, this, is this a bubble? You know, it, it's, I, I saw this one tweet. I wish I knew who had the quote. Uh, crypto is not in a bubble. Crypto is the pin, right? I, I kind of like that. Um, but the hype is kind of interesting because I remember in the dot-com days, the early internet days, people were really excited about putting women's shoes and pet food and like office supplies online. You know, that was like a big deal. Here, we're talking about money, identity, and new layers of the internet. And, uh, and so the hype, I think, is, is just part of the equation. I think we're going to see uh, booms and busts, but uh, we, we've, we're still in the early days of this, uh, of this space. And so... Again, we're, we're uh, in, the, uh, in a new technology frontier. The tokenization of things is upon us. Again, you're in the right room at the right time. I would uh, suggest you guys engage, educate, and, uh, and participate. So thank you. <laughs>